There's power in a picture, what it causes you to remember, the conversation it can start, and this one behind us, well, it did both. It was the last tour of duty image in the Vietnam War series on PBS. It reached tens of millions of people, and the Marine in that photo spoke with you, Kristen. And Tanya, it was an emotional conversation. Now 72 years old, this Vietnam vet traveled back in time some 50 years to the day that photo was taken, and I got to go with him. Kill or be killed, that's war and it takes a toll. You see that in this classic photo of a Marine in Vietnam. And you're left wondering, wow, you know, what has this guy been through? Henry Janikowski's family knows he's never talked much about the day that picture was taken. So when he opened up, I recorded the conversation with my phone. Did you ever think that that picture... Never, never, never. All to capture a memory about the wartime portrait of a young man named Hank, who then was just 21. Do you think you look 21 in that photo? I think I look 45 in that photo. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? Because war brings that out in you. Perhaps that's why filmmakers Lynn Novick and Ken Burns They made their legs move. Made it the final tour of duty image. They endured. In their decade-long project, the Vietnam War. We wanted to know how they chose it. So we went to New York to ask them about the power of a picture, to search for meaning for Hank. Of all the Marines that had served in Vietnam and there I was. And as it turns out, to fully document a story for the documentarians. Finding out that he is still alive and that he knows about the picture and all of that was um, really overwhelming for everybody who worked on this film. Lynn says they tried a number of images for the close of the film. Before we found the one that we felt expressed everything that we could possibly want the film to say. We watched it together. The photo follows a progression. You see alternating images of Vietnam soldiers and American servicemen. We had to find a way to basically overlap and dissolve the, bond, the boundaries between the Vietnamese soldier and the expression on his face and an American soldier and the expression on his face. He's sort of looking off to the side, but he's very much present and in a real place. And I replayed it probably 40, 50 times. Wow. Yeah, um, because there's that, uh, that thing that's not just an image, that's my father. Yes, my own dad. In the 70s, he became one of the faces of Vietnam as books trying to explain the war used that image from 1966. And here it is again in 2017, still telling his story. Dad found brothers in Vietnam. He lost brothers there. He fought to survive. It's hard to even put words around what you feel or what you think he's feeling. It's dread and loss and fear and anxiety. You acknowledged the fact that his experience was difficult and life-changing, and just by the, the simple use of that photo. It was the choice that got Dad talking. We were just coming in off of patrol at the artillery base in Kantian, right near the Ho Chi Minh Trail and the DMZ. It was the site of some fierce fighting in Vietnam. And I stopped to fill my canteen and Larry Burroughs approached me and asked if he could take a couple of pictures. And I said, what do you want me to do? And he said, just do what you're doing. How would you describe that expression? Anybody that has been in combat and has been shot at, and if they told me that they weren't scared, I'd call them a liar. And it's just the way it is. That's what I see. I see I see a Marine that was doing his duty, doing, doing his job. Okay. And then he spoke about the photographer. Larry included himself on some of the hardest operations that I had gone on. Larry Burroughs, who suspended this living moment in time, died covering the war. His helicopter shot down over Laos. It was tragic. There was that expression again, 50 years removed, but so close to the surface. Lynn caught it right away. 
That's yes. the same look it's as the in same the picture. Look. I know. Oh my God. You can almost feel what they experienced. And we haven't had that platform of conversation about Vietnam until now. Local Vietnam vet and former WCPO general manager Bill Fee. He has a purple heart, and he's written a book about his service. He says that the documentary has people talking about their experiences is a good thing because the turbulent times during and after Vietnam delayed the healing power of conversation. Coming home and enduring the public uh, reception at the time was uh, frightful. It was tragic. Filmmaker Ken Burns said the same thing. So I always feel that thank you for your service is a kind of awkward, embarrassed way of saying, let's stop talking about it, a period at the end of the sentence. And I'd like to change this, and I'd like to direct it right to your dad and just say, welcome home. What can we do for you? It starts a conversation just like the documentary. I told Ken the story behind my dad's picture. So he was coming back from a patrol. And he told me finding that photo and using it was a kind of emotional archaeology. There it spoke to the heart of the experience. When I was shared a picture of him holding that picture and saw who he still was, it was like a portal. It was like a wormhole that permitted me, as well as him, to go back in time. To go back in time and then return to reflect on the last 50 years. Dad, are you proud of that photo? Yes, I am very proud of it. The words with the picture so fitting. They endured. Dad endured, and he still does. A little verklempt. My dad's photo existed in a database of about 25,000 pictures. It was one of 2,000 to end up in the documentary series, so special indeed. And just like it got my father talking about that day, others are too. Here in Cincy, CET and Think TV have invited vets to share their stories. The first one runs on the CET Facebook page tomorrow. If you'd like to submit something, we'll have that info in this story on WCPO.com, along with my full interview with Ken Burns. First off, let me say thank you for sharing your personal story, um, your father's story, and I'm sure it can inspire many people out there, many veterans. And this documentary specifically, mm -hmm. there's been a big discussion of how it kind of opens a door and allows veterans, Vietnam era vets who maybe didn't talk about yeah. the war mm -hmm. in the past, it opens that door a little bit more. It is a platform to talk. Mm -hmm. And Ken Burns told me he'd be out on the street after the documentary series aired and people would stop him and say, I talked with my father about this because right. of the documentary or my grandfather, I learned more about it. So that is happening. I must say, it's very touching. I hope it's okay to say this, that I, your dad is here tonight. Yes. And it was mm -hmm. such an incredible honor to get to meet him. Oh, and for you. you, what an amazing opportunity to uh. get to tell your dad's story, to get yeah. to know him in this way. And I know it's been really emotional. Oh gosh, so emotional. This story has been a part of our family for like four decades sure. now. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, to be able to get to the heart of it, to be able to follow this path and understand it more right. for my dad, for the rest of our family, and then to have that conversation and hope that it is the catalyst for other people to have yeah. a conversation. I hope so. Yeah. Start the discussion and That's start right. the healing too in many cases. Yeah, conversation yeah. equals healing. Absolutely. Kristen, thank you. Thanks, Kristen. You bet. All right, if you would like to leave a message, by the way, for Kristen's father, you can do so right now. Just go over to her Facebook page.